Hello and welcome to the next part of painting the Anschut, the warlock of the Gabrax, <laughs> a miniature from uh, Mies Miniatures. Um, in this part of the Painting Buddha Academy videos, we will show you how to paint a nice uh, wood effect. Wood is a topic that is uh, very close to my heart. I really uh, like uh, the material wood. Um, it has a very uh, special aesthetic to it and a very special atmosphere. So in this model we will be showing you different kinds of wood. One would be the axe handle here, um, which will be similar to the wood that we have already prepared uh, here. And the second wood will be uh, the one on the space here, which uh, is different because there is some bark uh, here and also some, uh, some wood shining through. So uh, yeah, we will be showing you these two uh, different types. They make a big difference. Uh, the, the bark is usually way darker than the wood itself. If you look at the reference, you will find that wood is such a vers versatile, differentiated material. Um, it looks completely different when it's uh, fresh than uh, when it's old and kind of worn out and gray. Um, and one important thing about wood that uh, you have to understand first is that wood is not uh, brown. It comes with a lot of very different nuances, actually. Uh, wood is yellowish, uh, red. The, you can find purple tones in it, uh, green tones that mm. come from the moss. If you want to paint the wood, it is good to know when this wood is used uh, in real life. Yeah, for what kind of purpose it would actually serve. Yes. Some woods are harder than other woods. Uh, some are lighter. Um, some are flexible, some are really stiff. Yes, some only occur in certain areas or regions in the world, uh, like tropical woods. Um, yeah, so it is a really big topic. If you want to recreate a realistic uh, um, yeah, wooden effect, it's good to, to go uh, and study how uh, tools are manufactured uh, or maybe see a wooden workshop. And in there you will find out that um, this axe handle, for example, would be uh, from the... Uh, outer rings of the of the wood so the grain would run uh, along the the handle here and theoretically if this would be thicker there would be some edge rings here but we will not consider it for this little um, for this little piece i think here we go for a hickory tree um which is quite a hard wood we will make it look a bit worn because it's a beastman so i don't think he's necessarily uh has the time to kind of treat his wood <laughs> with or oils. With hands often. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, let's get right to it. If you look at the palette, you see that there is a variety of different brown tones, actually, that I have prepared here. Um, you can see there, there is this um, more sand-colored uh, brown here, which is a graveyard earth. Then we have this um, vesture brown, um, mornfang brown type of color here which uh, has a little uh, red impact, a vermin brown. Um, this here is a scotch brown. So the, the green tone here is the flat vert uh, mimetico from, uh, from Italiri. Then we have obviously the light color again here, the, the cream, which is a, a bleach bone with some sky white. And uh, down here we have a black. This here is the emerald umber from P3, which is a good uh, shadow color. Then we have the, the tank brown here which will be important for the shadows. And um, a little bit of the Griffon sepia here, which is also good for certain properties later on. To start with, I think uh, I will try to find a, a tone for the, for the hickory that uh, comes close. For this, I will mix some umbra umbra with a little bit of the, uh, the graveyard earth here. In order to find the, the tone, you can use also your reference that you have, uh, the sheet and then apply the color just directly beside the, the reference here. It's, a bit, it's not so sharp, but um, you, you see the point that you can really easily um, paint it directly on the reference, and if this comes uh, close to what you want, you know that you... Uh, uh, the right way. Yeah, yeah you're doing it the right way. That's a good thing to, to have such a reference. Okay, I added a, a little bit of the Deneb stone also to give a grayish impact too. All right, and with this tone, uh, in a base-like consistency, we apply just on to everything that we want to become hickory. 
I think also the yellow uh, kind of helps uh, the model. The, the, the different tone here will look um, very good, I think. Remember, this is just the wood. There will be some wear, wear and tear uh, later on, so some dirt from gripping it and, you know. Killing, anim uh, killing enemies. Yes, I, I didn't want to mention it. <laughs> Let's just assume he just chops wood with it. Very dirty, bloody wood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, like this. We don't need another layer, that's good enough. Um, and now we add a little bit gray into the mix. As you see here. And... Uh, Again, if you have a close look at wood, you will see that uh, it has a, a, a grain. And the grain, basically, it consists of, of fine lines, a little bit like human hair. Human hair also is the result of many different tones and many different hairs that then um, create the, the color that, is that you can see. It's actually really similar. It's just uh, way more compressed. Wood is, uh, consists of fibers. Mm -hmm. When, when you look at wood, it's uh, two parts. It's uh, the very dark uh, part and the, the light part in the wood. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the light part is also softer, and this one consists of fibers, and the other one is, uh, is resins and stuff like that. that. That's what makes it so unique, uh, so, so, so flexible and yet so strong, because it, it's, it's composed of two components. It's got one, one really soft one and one harder one. In order to, to paint these wood grain uh, lines, um, it is important to take a certain um, position when you paint. Um, one is that you position your hand on the on the table or wherever you um, you have you are painting on. It should be stable, though. Yes, this is the important thing. You need stability for this, and then you use your 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 smaller fingers and kind of connect them either <laughs> to the to the table or to the here to the cork to the piece. You see. And what we will be painting now are fine lines. Uh, like this, and um, the the move that I do uh, now it's uh, more extreme, obviously, than what I will paint uh, in a second. But this is uh, as it would uh, look magnified, right? So this move is very important. You see, it's like uh, grabbing your brush at the at the close to the tip, and then to kind of pull it very quickly in a straight line down like this. It's something you can and should practice um, before trying to paint the, the piece. You turn the piece around the way you want to apply the, the, the grain. Then, as I said, connect to, uh, to some more stable position like this. And then start to draw in these little gray lines, uh, grain lines, like this. So here. The way you hold it and the way you draw the these these grain lines is very important for the for the look. Because uh, again magnified, um, the end like the starting point will be like this, like thick, and then it will run out in a final line like this at the end. Um, so you will have a more color here and uh, uh, like a finer line and even a spike running uh, running out here. So, for example, if I want the highlight to be here, I should go into this direction. Yeah, it makes sense. So you start from the other side, so you just have more of the lighter color applied to the end where you supposedly want to have more light. Yes. So as the first step was um, not such a big difference to the base tone. We will continue adding a bit, uh, a little bit more gray into it. And again, take a good position and um, start to draw in these lines here.
It's interesting how you can almost sculpt volumes with uh, with the light. And right there, uh, next to his uh, to his pinky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like there there is a knot, and uh, yes, I know for sure there is not because uh, <laughs> the stick was like, pretty smooth. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's why I like um, wood that is flat. I like to paint the the the, the grain on, so I can kind of influence where uh, how the um, the end result will be. You see this uh, the staff here, for example. It was sculpted wood with uh, with lines and um, more uh, crooked, while this was just a nearly flat uh, stick. Now, after we have applied the uh, first light, it's important to apply a, a shadow, also to gain a bit of uh, the dark grain back. Yes. For this, we mix a little bit umbra umbra into the base mix here, and uh, now comes also something that is important for painting wood. Um, you know, these lines sometimes look uh, pretty artificial and rough. Uh, sometimes they're not 100% straight and also they are pretty thick. With this step that we do now, with this, uh, you see, it's a, not a base tone, it's a lighter co a color, like a, like a light layer. We will now try to place these lines besides these, the lines that we have put uh, before. That way, we will split the line that was there in, uh, first into half. And uh, because it's uh, so transparent, the, the color, it will shine through and um, create the... Uh, that overlaying transparent yes. effect you have in wood. Yeah. Where and you can actually see the, the other layer. Exactly. And this is what we want to do. So don't uh, go too, um, too thick here with the, with the color. We have a light a layer color. And again, um, what I already explained to you with the spike, um, the the starting point will be darker than the finishing point. So now we turn the piece the other way around as we did uh, while painting the light. I would like to have the shadow here. So again, I connect to the to the piece. Keep in mind, like the shadow direction will be like this. And I don't pay, turn my brush around, I turn the miniature around when I need to reach, for example, if I want to create a shadow from here to there, I will do this. If it should be from here to there, I will turn it and paint it like this. And uh, again, it's like pretty diluted. So with this, we try to kind of break up the, the lines that we created before, if they are too thick. Very gently, nothing too dramatic, actually. And also here. Again, uh, take your position. <laughs> it takes a while to find uh, a comfortable and stable position for yourself. Yes, especially when you... it's, it's it's really important to practice this because um, everything that, that that includes straight lines or or a very controlled movement will will really depend on a stable position. The next step will be to uh, add even more light to the to the mix, so more gray and a little bit of the yellow and white ivory tone. You can use this color also to work out uh, little splinters and little irregularities in the wood, um, you know, little chips or points of interest. And um, really use it very carefully and cautiously. Paint this very subtly and um, only in some points, not, not everywhere. Be very careful. Then as the, I would even say, last step of the highlight, add more white to, to the mix. And then add just some little, little touches um, at the very end of the, of the X, like this. 
Also, this is a step that we can repeat um, at the very end when we have another look on the general situation. And sometimes it, uh, it, 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 became, it becomes clear that it needs just some, I don't know, some little, little extra point somewhere. This was actually not so good, so we take our gypsy brush, raise it. Okay, and then you can go into with the shadow with the light shadow color again here to correct uh, this these things here when you went overboard. Since um, some parts might be too too bright, like I think uh, down here is a little bit too bright compared to here, um, you can also use some um, some washes and some colors that will give. A little bit more um, saturation and like vibrance into uh, in the into the wood. Also, when you if you remember what we said before, it's good to um, to have different tones in the wood. For this, I will use a little bit um, brown or green usually. It should be dirty right there too because he grabs the axe a lot, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, and his dirty hands, yeah. <laughs> and it's also good to apply it on the hand, for example, first. Like this and uh, here on the on the bottom, maybe it's a bit uh, moist actually there, although it's a dry wood. Yeah, he's got sweaty palms. <laughs> and then you can very carefully wash the like brush the the wash uh, into the into the tones that you have applied before. Many small uh, slight layers are better than uh, one thick layer. And actually, if this was uh, rosewood, for example. Um, which is a little bit reddish. You could do this step with um, with a red um, red ink or a re red wash. They are very very nice washes. Uh, for example, from from Vallejo, um, there are some inks that you might use for that. But be careful with inks; they are usually uh, too strong. We will let this dry. Repeat the the step with uh, again with the, with the dark brown wash and uh, slowly start to to bring in some some additional tones into the axe. But yeah, I really need to dark this down a bit more. I might even um, take some some of the the base tone mix with the umbral umbral again and um, actually paint some more grain uh, grain here. Yeah, like this. Oh, that helped so much already. In case you notice that you want this uh, really darker, you can uh, add, again, like the umbral umbral to the mix. Also a little bit of the tank brown here and black. So you will get a really nice dark tone that also has a little bit gloss to it. And um, yeah, if you apply it here on the uh, bottom part in several layers, uh, it will eventually become really, really dark. It's not wrong that it has a certain gloss to it too, because if it's, uh, it's, if it's touched a lot in, in certain places, mm -hmm. uh, would this... Um, looks almost polished then. Yeah, this is why um, I really like to, to bring in some slight gloss to, uh, to the wood, only in the, in the shadows, not in the highlight. The highlight should stay um, matte and uh, as it is here. But from down here, it's, um, it's a good way to just naturally create something that, um, that is more interesting than, than the plain uh, surface. I also added a little tiny little bit of sewer water to the uh, to the palette from Secret Weapon. It's a very nice color that you can use to very quickly um, bring in some some green um, moss like tone to the to whatever you want to paint. Because I have a little green here in the um, hemp um, thread of the X, and yeah, that's hemp actually. And uh, yeah, it's important to to bring this tone in into the wood at some point to bring it together and to harmonize the whole thing so it will really benefit from this board be careful not to go into your highlight here okay and that's the very last step um, as I said before we will bring in some some highest light point with the cream color and white tone nearly white and with this, we can add 
small points, not lines anymore, but points of uh, on the X points of interest. This step is more extreme, for example, on the staff, as you can see here, and it really helps to, to bring out the detail that um, that you see on, on here. For the handle, I would say that um, that's enough. Don't overdo it, because it's very easy to overdo it. <laughs> yeah, plus if you have a smooth surface and you, you overdo it with stuff like that, it looks uh, it looks very painted and you, you don't have that mm -hmm. artificial 3D effect no more. Yeah, but that's already it. As I said, you can work with tones uh, of, of purple, of red also here around this area. You can bring in greens uh, the way we just showed you with the green wash with the sewer water. And um, yeah, just observe the, the reference of your wood very carefully and then you will find out what the wood needs um, more. So this brings us to, to, the, to the base, which will be the next part. <laughs> As I said, we will be painting some tree bark. So the first step will be to paint the parts that are underneath the tree bark here that are showing through. I think this time it will be this um, scotch brown uh, reddish to uh, tree tone with a little bit black in it. Here again, we can keep in mind this is a piece of wood that is uh, lying around on the floor, in, probably in some kind of forest, so it might get wet and mossy and. Mm -hmm. We quickly put a, a, a light tone, a light yellowish tone on that um, to to start off. Um, it's a mixture of Commando Kaki and uh, Balo Brown, and this is a good um, a good base for for the lighter color that will then contrast uh, nicely with the with the uh, bark. And as I said, we will paint this first because it's under uh, it's underneath the bark, so it's good to to paint it, and then everything that comes after that uh, will cover it, so we don't have to worry about mistakes so much. Now we will add some Denep stone uh, into this mix to lighten this up. Turn it around, and this is again a layer consistency, not too thin. And um, the same thing that we did with um, the X handle. With the X handle, uh, here we can be a bit more rough and uh, apply more color actually, because it's a bigger surface. So, and we need quite a lot of uh, color on this actually. And it's also uh, way more textured than um, the X handle itself. The X handle was uh, pretty uh, smooth from the surface itself, yeah. and this here, as you can obviously see has its uh, own tex uh, texture and grain. The base is not so smooth as the X handle. Um, it is more diff difficult to really tell, uh, s um, give a, a grain that you that you want to create. It's because you cannot go straight on this surface. You will be likely to drift, drift away <laughs> um, caused by the, the texture. Here you also see that in the uh, the yellow, when you apply it on a dark on a black uh, foundation, or a, you know if there's black in it, it can appear slightly green. I'm not so sure if you can see it in the. It has a green tint to it, not not too strong and not too visible, but yes, it, it's mm. definitely there. Mm. So this is also a good thing. Okay, again more more of the. And then have stone, more of the gray. And actually, I like to add the gray, as I said, like a pure tone would uh, would be too saturated. Pure yellow, some, uh, for example, is not so good. Uh, a little bit gray is always good in the in the wood to make it uh, look more realistic. See here, it's only touches. Can you just um, very quickly Touch some of these spikes and this will be alright. Mm -hmm. 
it is really gradually becoming more and more precise. Um, many things actually are in painting that you begin as, if, with a kind of sketch and then you, you start adding uh, and breaking up the surfaces that you created before with uh, more finer highlights. you like to tell us where you got this particular piece of wood from because it's yeah. uh, really nicely swung and knotted and twisted in itself yeah um, actually these um, this wood is, um, is this here um, that's a little root or a little twig of a olive tree that uh, my actually my brother-in-law <laughs> brought from Greece you can kind of uh, when you use uh, some clippers or like thongs you can break it apart and then you will get exactly like these nice great structures here that are just perfect for for the trees so yeah try to find the olive tree <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, use also the uh, every part of the olive tree uh, the roots you can use for a really nice bases um, yeah they are really really beautiful trees out there some wood types are protected in germany um, because they're tropical woods And you are not allowed to 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 kind of sell them commercially, I think. Yeah, that's worldwide, I, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, there are some regulations of wood, but mm -hmm. yeah, you, you see, it comes up really nicely together with the little green also from the base coat, and uh, that shines through the green color. Still, uh, we need to break uh, break these uh, these up a bit again with some light shadow color, and for this, I think I will just use the the base to uh, tone that I had here before. Also add a little bit of the green. So I have a very light green color. And yes, with this we start to to paint in some wood grain to give it an impact. Actually, we need to, this to be a bit stronger. So yeah, like this would be good. And also here, but be careful, don't overdo it. This step really helped, as you see, it really starts to look like wood. And now, um, the last step, as always, uh, we will mix some, some, some of the light, light tone and um, add some, some small points, like here, at the very end. You can also do this step uh, once the tree bark is, is done, so you can balance it uh, out right um, with, the, with the dark tones, because you have to do it for the bark also. But um, I just want to add a little bit to get a good, um, better feeling of the wood. <laughs> to get a better impression. Like here, you see how it will look. Okay, I think we will leave it like this for now. Also, we will decide if we will add a little uh, something shiny here. But as I said, um, now we will continue with the bark. And for the bark, I use this little reddish brown tone here. It's a scotch brown with a black and a little bit of Sharon granite in it. So it creates a really dark gray brownish um, color. You can also, you see here, uh, start to mix in different tones, add a little bit more shard on granite on the top here, and uh, work more with a, with a red here. Um, yeah, it's there are no real rules uh, to doing this. Uh, it's good to bring in some tones. I think you you can only be rewarded when you try out things and. Yeah, see how they look. For the very end of the bark here, I will add a little bit gray. Looking on the reference uh, told us that the bark uh, that is very, I don't know, brittle or like breaking off or very old. Here it's still the bark, like the healthy bark. 
And then this might be bark that is nearly falling off. So it is gray. Sometimes you also have wood that has uh, diseases, uh, like a fungus. And then bark falls off. So I think it will look uh, just better if there is, uh, it's a change in tone here and it gets lighter at this, uh, this part here. Oh yeah, definitely. And um, the tree bark should actually look different on, on both sides because one of the sides is uh, exposed to sunlight for more time, I guess. Mm -hmm. Actually, I kind of forgot to paint the, the earth before I painted the tree. I would usually do that. It will be more difficult to apply the, 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 the brush, the brushing here. So yeah, after applying what I would call a advanced base coat with um, different tones in it, uh, it's now time to to add a little bit of uh, the gray again to the mix. The important aspect here is though, this is not grain, this is bark. So we will not be painting grain. <laughs> that would be silly. We will be painting a texture, uh, like you see here with many, many different um, different knots and uh, these little, little bits. And that's why we have to paint it a bit differently. Theoretically, you could uh, dry brush that, but I don't like dry brushing so much since it's not so controlled. Instead, I will mix some, some of the uh, Deneb stone and a bit of the gray uh, together with the, with the base tone and a little white. And with this, I will um, take the brush a bit sideways and start to build up the light uh, situation as if this uh, would be like a, a classical miniature. Like here, see the the mm, texture is different than in the wood grain. It's uh, bark is supposed to look like it's um, it's broken apart. It's uh, peeling off, so it it should consist of many small different parts that, that form a structure all together but uh, all for themselves are like little dots mm -hmm. of interest so to say. Also be careful not to mix up too much of the the, the red brown tone with with the white or gray because it will become um, it will look too purple. So I use a bit of the gray instead and uh, black like this and then pure gray for the highlight. So you come up with something like this. It's also interesting to see you're using shorter streaks with the brush. You're not doing continuous lines. Yes. It's short streaks and it's... Uh... Or you also change the appearance of the brush stroke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of the of the texture of the yeah. yeah. Also, this the holding it sideways and then and then dabbing it with short uh, yeah, motion like this really helps. If you decide to spontaneously change a piece of wood that you painted as wood before, like this down here, into, into bar um, bark, you can do this at this point. <laughs> so I think it's good if it's a bit differentiated down there also on the base. The next step is to, um, to bring in some washes and to um, start darkening down the, the step that we did before. For this I need I use some uh, brown ink and uh, we will dilute this pretty high and also mix in some of the base tone with the black so it doesn't it's not so super glossy. And we will apply it from the from the lower part here.
Then now clean the brush. And then very gently apply it, uh, paint it up. Yeah. Uh, that's good. It adds a little bit of the darkness back to, mm -hmm. to the bar. Yeah, this uh, was white, uh, way too, uh, way too light. Just give it a very, very slight tint and not go crazy with it. Also, I added some green here, and we can also add a little bit of green at this point, and then. Um, dab it into selected areas again don't go crazy with this just um, just add a little bit here and there yeah green makes sense i mean that should be mossy wood if it's lying around the woods and mm -hmm. yeah there are there are many ways how to um how to um, make a make it like incorporate a moss effect there uh, one would be to do it like this and then afterwards maybe even glue some little parts of, of uh, static grass moss on, onto that. We will uh, choose if we want to do this um, actually later when we put in the vegetation also here on the ground of the forest. Uh, I like moss. It, I think it's uh, yeah. always looks kind of good. Yeah, I think... As long we'll, as you don't overdo it and if it's uh, completely covered in moss, it looks ridiculous again. Mm, I think we will do this actually. And the good thing about it, uh, about the... And the scenic moss that we have uh, is that we don't have to to put it on. We can um, proxy it on, <laughs> like just put it on without gluing and see how it looks. Then think about it. Yeah, but you see it's slowly coming up really nice. I will dry this with a blow, a blow dryer and then we'll be back. Okay, as um, we would like to bring a bit more vibrance in the tone, uh, we decided to take in some Griffion sepia and again we will apply it uh, at some places that um, will help yeah, to bring a bit little life into the into the tone but you see you can really um, you can really bring a lot of different tones in it without uh, spoiling it so just try try some things out you know experiment um, yeah. Oh, but that's looking really good right now. I like that, that color tone. Mm -hmm. What I also like to do is to use a tank brown. Tank brown is also it gives this more reddish tone to it here. You can slowly build in little reddish tones with this. Makes a whole lot of difference, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you see the red tones really helped us to, to, to bring in some, some life, especially here. It looks very natural now. Now, still some little bit more uh, depth would be good here, I would say, underneath. So we just take the brown ink, place it underneath here. Oops, that was a bit too high. Uh goes overboard <laughs> okay and um, and yeah just add little little portions of it also the hoof will be here one of the hooves so there will be more shadow right there yeah I, I want to yes I want to have a bit more shadow here and then we will uh, put little points of light here but don't go crazy with the with the brown ink it's really a strong <laughs> strong color actually Okay, we let this dry. Okay, and now as always the last highlight. And with this we will designate certain points of interest and paint them with little light dots.
So these are peak points on the bark that are mm -hmm. catching the light. Yes. And uh, going to the to the top to the tip here, it will get uh, more light, like lightest. And this part will be collecting around here with all these little little dots. You have to be careful not to become too bright, but actually it's good to have little points at the end here that really catch the, the attention. And I think I will I will um, add some more here. If they become too much, I can still go in with the with the base tone and um, correct them. Just blank them out. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. What we will do now is we will cover the the edge here with black it will make a big um, difference actually um oh, because yes. I, I actually love this part when it frames the whole thing yeah i me too and then we will be back for for the marriage of the base and the goat <laughs> okay and here it is the goat on its base we just um, put these little grass things on there temporarily uh, you can still remove them and i will have to to correct and paint them properly and uh, find something that I can stick up to into that in order to uh, simulate a forest base. Uh, we talked earlier about balancing and this is a very good example for this. Um, you see that the hoof is very prominent in this dark region now with the base especially and um, here I can already see that um, I should add maybe some little dots of uh, highlight here. This is uh, what we always have to do when we finish a miniature. We um, we will have to take a look on how it looks in the base and then make decisions concerning the the color. Sometimes also we discover things like, uh, like this gap is still a bit prominent here. The metal is not done. But I think I will add a little um, strap here that also shows that there is some kind of wind going on, makes it, making this more dynamic. This concludes actually our... How to paint the uh, unshoot the cursed tutorial um, i hope you learned a lot um, and i hope that you can now try out your own to create your own wood and your own fur and bones <laughs> so yeah thanks for being with us uh, also thanks to mati for um, for his great comments <laughs> and uh, yeah see you around for the next part goodbye